Alrighty, so we're going to start working on cutting and hanging up a bunch of ragweed and um, lamb's quarter and other stuff that's grown on the farm to dry it for tree hay um, for the pigs throughout the winter, especially since this year our hay guy is going to be a little tight, so we know we have to buy it from someone else. Um, but I've also just got a ton of it. I did let it go too long, but I'll show you that when we get out there. Okay, so we don't mow. Uh, we do occasionally weed it and knock down, but we really like, this is our willow coppice right there. Um, we do really like letting stuff grow because we get a lot of really cool birds that come back here. But uh, normally I'll try to knock some of the ragweed down before it goes to pollen and seed because the pollen is a nightmare. Um, dealing with right now with the pool, all that pollen just keeps collecting. And even though it's settling out, it has turned my pool a nice teal color um, no matter what I seem to do. So we're going to go ahead and take this stuff down. Also, I'd have had much better forage quality if I'd have cut it before it went to pollen head like this, but at least I've caught it before it goes to seed. Um, yeah, so we are gonna, you can see it's all over. This is just the backyard. There are several other patches scattered throughout the farm. We're gonna try to knock down as much of this as we can, tie it up into bundles, and then hang it up. I'll show you when I flip this around what we're using to cut it with. All right, so this is what we're gonna be using just a little hand scythe. Um, I don't know where to tell you to get one of these. I imagine you can get one at Lehman's. There's probably a dozen other lawn care old style places you could get one of these from. I bought this from a flea market when I was like 15. So I've had this for a, God, almost two decades now. A while. Um, well, actually, what would that be? bought it when I was about 15, 28, about 13 years. So not almost two decades, 13 years. And this thing has just moved around with me everywhere I've gone. Um, it works pretty great. I use it daily to harvest some to feed to the piglets or anybody that's not in an area. The piglets are out grazing and have been for a day or two now, but when they're just trapped in a concrete yard like that, or um, like the boars when they're stuck in their side yard, they'll get some stuff cut with this if I think they're running a little low on decent stuff. Ragweed's awesome, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cut. So one thing I wish I had said in this video about working with these scythes, whether it's this little hand scythe or my larger uh, two-handed scythe, um, you're nothing you're trying to do is attempting to hack down any forage. You're attempting to slice it. So one, you wanna make sure it's really sharp, and two, it's a very gentle slice movement. If you attempt to hack, you're just gonna damage your blade. These are very thin-ish blades. So like this one, if I get real, <clears throat> if I just try to get after it and hack something down real quick, cause I'm in a rush, it'll tend to bend the blade and then I've got to take it back into a vise and bend it back out straight so that it's functional again. So one, keep it, keep it sharp. And two, don't hack, slice. All right, so I've been going at it for a couple of hours now. Uh, I promised Claire I'd be in at six and it's 5.45, so I guess I gotta go ahead and stop and uh, pause on this. I did uh, not, I guess, estimate very well as to how much of it there was gonna be. Um, I knew there'd be a lot, but there is a lot. Thankfully it is wilting down some, so that, that helps, but um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it mostly dry here in the backyard in piles. I'm going to show you what all we got. Let's look at this. So this is already broken down, or, you know, wilted down a good little bit, but... You see, and those piles here that haven't really wilted down, well, the lower portions have, they're... The tallest parts here are about hip height, but the depth of the stems is at least to my knees. And this is probably 30, 40 feet long of a row here. And you can see that what we got was there through all of this willows over. And then I went around the house just a little bit here. Uh, but now all the willows are stuck down. The willows are clear through their base all the way. And we can see payday back there. Um, and we have, there's the bigger willows here that are on their third year growing. Um, 
And some of these aren't, they don't look real big, but some of them are real nice and stout, like this one. Put my hand up next to it for judgment there. So that's a pretty big one. Oh, also, careful. <laughs> um, but that's, I mean, even so, that's a, these get cut every year, and that's what I've got. That's at least larger than my thumb. Um, and there's a lot of them this size after three years in there. But then this year, we noticed a bunch of them looked like they didn't didn't come back because we had a lot of rabbit damage. So we planted a bunch of these corkscrews in here, just some random real thin ones that I had left over from our uh, cuttings that we sold this year. And we just stabbed them in. Some of them have made it. Some of the ones that I didn't expect to come back came back and so shaded them out. But we just planted them in real dense anyways. Um, and then with the ragweed, we lost some, which I expected. Maybe now that the drought is kind of over, Fingers crossed, knock on all this wood out here, right? Um, some of these will come back. They are starting to put up some new buds that they hadn't, so crossing the fingers there. But that was what we were having to be real careful in here for, and why I couldn't just bring, for this area over here, I couldn't just bring my big side out and just knock it all down, um, is because we have these little willows planted all throughout here, so I was having to dodge those as I went and not try to... <laughs> Slice them down. Most of them are not doing real hot, but some of them are putting out some new little growth. So hopefully they'll at least establish enough of a root system to make it through the winter. Come over here and we'll look at payday real quick. I left right along the fence so that payday still had shade in his wallow, which I threw him a bunch of the ragweed branches and he's currently just like dragging them into the wallow and playing with them um, like a goober, which is about right. Yeah, but he's doing great. I've been really happy with him so far. He's really starting to bulk out a little bit with a little bit more feed. Um, I left his hose on way too long one day, and so he got an exceptional wallow. I just went back into the house after chores to grab a cup of coffee and forgot about it, so. <clears throat> but here's our quarantine paddock that, I mean, look, we're going on, ooh, 90 days with a pig in it and it's like a tenth of an acre we had five pigs in it for a little while and there's a bare spot around the uh, trees up there where i've been feeding them and that's it everything else still has stuff a lot of it is sump weed and pigweed what are you just like these blowing bubbles yeah I'm talking about you goober <laughs> anyway so um we still have all of this to take down and uh, over towards the pool more but like i said i gotta wrap it up and start heading inside um i think what i'm gonna do with this stuff is kind of start letting it dry here and over the next few days just keep picking up and flipping it and uh if we can before it gets real real crunchy um maybe it'll be crunchier than the next day or two but before it gets crunchy enough that the leaves really start falling off I'll either haul it off to the barn then, or what I'll go ahead and do, if, I, if it does get crunchy back here, that's kind of fine too, I'll bring my wood chipper back here, and I don't want to attempt to store this much like this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it into my through my chipper when it's really dry, um, up to, so we'll, we'll chip the top four or five feet on most of it, and leave the bottom two foot of stem. And I'll throw those all over into a pile. And then that bottom length of stem, on some of these, this, that bottom length of stem is pretty long. Yeah, that's at least four or five feet of bottom length too on some of these. The grasshoppers just went crazy. And then when they grow real dense, they lose all those lower leaves. Um, but I'll then run through those through afterwards and use them as mulch. But the top parts, we can then store in uh, barrels or bags over the winter, like big long contractor bags as uh, essentially just shredded hay so that then I can just be adding a scoop or two to the feeders and breeders feed over the winter um, and we could just soak it when we're soaking the rest of their feed but then they'll still get greens and I don't expect this to take the place of all of the hay or um, hay or anything like that that I'll have to buy this winter but I'm hoping that it at least makes a dent and if nothing else just ensures that I've got a little bit of extra greens in their diet that I knew grew here and ragweed's pretty, this is uh, giant ragweed. It's pretty high in protein. And then there's some 
uh, some asters and uh, lands quarter in there too. So really hopeful. I'm gonna go ahead and pause now. I probably won't film me hacking all of this down because I'll just do it where I have some time over the next several days. Um, but I will film as we're chipping it and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all nice and dry. So stay tuned for that. So they added a chance of rain for this afternoon that I wasn't expecting this is the next day. Um, so I went ahead and real quick this morning brought it all into the barn here that we'd cut in the backyard. It has definitely started to wilt down some, but with all the humidity, not as much as it could have. Um, yeah, so this is, those pieces are five foot apart. Um, and then the whole barn's 18 feet across. So that's two foot door or three foot door. So roughly eight ish foot from there to there. And then that's five foot. So if we brought this over to there, we've got at least an eight foot by five foot by everywhere from eight to 12 foot tall solid thing. And I mean, it, I, like I didn't stack this loose. I should have probably, but that's, it's dense in there. Um, I know I'm going to need to move it around some. I know this isn't the best way to get it to dry, but I figure at least standing up, it'll dry better. And being in the barn out of the direct path of the rain, even though there are drips and it's in that open section up there, it'll still, it'll dry better. And I know that what I'll need to do is just kind of move it all a time or two over the next couple days so that the centers don't get moldy. Um, but then as soon as it's dry enough, that I think I can go ahead and store it. We'll run it through the chipper and store it in some big contractor bags for winter. I don't figure, I mean, this is probably half to a third the amount of this stuff that I plan to harvest over the next week or two. So we should have, I don't know, at least a few bags is my guess. And what I'm comparing this to is you know, like what you'd add, like just pelleted alfalfa pellets or chopped hay or chaff hay, something like that, you know. Um, if I do it when it's a little bit more damp, I could do it as like the chaff hay, drop in some probios or something, and then double bag the contractor bags top down to make kind of silagey stuff. I just need to pack it real, real tight to get as much air out as, out as possible. Maybe use a shop vac to pull out some air. So we'll see whether I decide to try to get it as, I mean, it's honestly just going to depend on if it dries fully down enough that it can be really, really dry. Or if I'm like, well, it's mostly dry, but there's a little bit of moisture to it. So we'll see. And then just as we're logging out here, thank you guys so much for watching the channel and watching videos. If you make it to this far in the video, then you are seriously appreciated because I know not everybody does. I know a lot of viewers just click on, they watch the first couple minutes and then they tune out um, and either try to find another video, which is totally fine. If my videos aren't what you're wanting to see, then I totally get that. But um, if you are watching it, you're helping me get those view hours, which we need to be able to become monetized and make this worth the very little time I have to devote to it. So you are super, super appreciated, especially if you're a subscriber because Honestly, to just lay this all out there on the table, to make this stuff worth it and it eventually become monetized, you have to hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. I'm currently sitting around 330 subscribers, and I think we're just shy of 2,000 watch hours, which is absolutely amazing. Most channels don't grow as fast as we have. We did have one video that hit 12,000 views for some crazy reason. I don't know what happened there, but the algorithm kind of lost its mind and decided to play favorites with us. Um, and that was really what made all of our other videos get those few hundred views because of the end, those end credit video recommendations, I guess. Um, if for some reason we had another video blow up like that, we'd be doing stellar. But until then, the best thing you can do to help us out and make this worth our time with, you know, our all of the other stuff that we do, the farm itself, teaching yoga and everything else. I don't have a ton of time, but I do try to make plenty of time because we want to be able to get this content out there that helps educate people. But at the same time, I do need to prioritize where bills get paid. So I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Even if it takes another three, four years to get monetized, I'll still be doing this. It just kind of, you know, makes some icing on the cake and makes it justified doing, and I can spend money on it and buy nicer tripod systems and things like that and spend some time actually editing on the computer like I really should be doing instead of just using iMovie, which is what I've been currently doing because it's really what I can devote the time to at the moment. 
Um, so yeah, if you wanna if you wanna help push that along, then there is the Patreon, um, which I am more than happy to adjust what some of those things are on there. Apparently I'm not happy with what you get for the Patreon stuff we've got on there. Except the highest one, which is $50 a month, which I know that's a huge, that is a huge step. Um, but with that one, you do get a one hour consultation with me once a month over, honestly, whatever the heck you want to chat about. Um, I am not a know-it-all. I just know a decent amount of random stuff and I've been doing this a little while. So if you think I've got something valuable to give to you, then through an hour conversation, then that's a great option for you. Um, I do think I'm going to start throwing the videos on one day early on the Patreon for the lowest tier, the $5 a month, which is just the buy me a cup of coffee to edit videos. Um, cause unfortunately, oddly enough, coffee shops don't like it if you just walk in there and play on your computer for a couple hours and don't buy something. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, and then we've got a couple other tiers up where we'll throw your name on a, throw your name on one of our bat burger bee houses on the farm and every now and then do updates as to which ones are doing which and which have things. Um, but I'm not super stoked about that one. So honestly, if you have suggestions for things you'd like to see on the Patreon that would help get you to be a Patreon member, drop it in the comments and let me know and I will do it. <laughs> Oddly enough, if people tell me that they'll give me money to do something, I usually do that thing. Um, sorry, capitalism. But uh, yeah, on a side note, Feel free to keep dropping those comments. Todd, I will eventually make a video about me grilling one of our burgers. I promise. Honestly, I just need to get some of uh, Kevin's seasoning ordered out here before. I don't know what Mazakine. Oh, she's just barking at payday. All of our other dogs love the pigs. Mazakine is not a pig fan. So, I don't know. And now she's just standing in the willows. Um, I guess I gotta get some of Kevin's seasoning so that I can do that for you, but... Um, we got part way into that next meeting that we have, or I'll just shoot him a text and tell him I need him to mail me some. Um, yeah, beyond that, thank you guys so much for making it this far and you guys have a great rest of your week.